It doesn't matter how much time passes, how much else changes, some things always stay the same. It doesn't matter if all of the tech, all of the programming languages, the entire world changes, some devs will always attempt to do things that others have tried to do in the past and think they are going to do it better because, well, Obviously, they're going to do it better because they're the ones that are doing it. So, this is a post from April 2000. Things You Should Never Do, Part 1. It's going to have some very dated examples, and the main example turns out to actually be a good thing in the long run. <laughs> but let me know if some of this sounds familiar. Netscape 6.0 is finally going into its first public beta. There never was a version 5.0. The last major release version 4.0 was released almost three years ago. Three years is an awfully long time in the internet world. During this time, Netscape sat by helplessly as their market share plummeted. It's a bit smarmy me to criticize them for waiting so long between releases. They didn't do it on purpose now, did they? Well, yes, they did. They did it making the single worst strategic mistake that any software company can make. They decided to rewrite the code from scratch. And all these years later, it's not like the idea of rewriting something has just gone away. Nowadays, though, the exciting language to do it in is Rust. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not going to tell you that there are no valid reasons to rewrite a project, whether it's in Rust or C++ or any other language that you might be writing it into. But if that is going to be done, it should be done with thought and care and not as the first thing you try. Rewriting into a new language, rewriting into a new toolkit isn't going to fix all of your problems and in many ways may introduce new ones if not done with extreme care. Borland made the same mistake when they bought Arago and tried to make it into DBase for Windows. Microsoft almost made the same mistake trying to rewrite Word for Windows from scratch in a Doom project called Pyramid, which was shut down, thrown away, and swept under the rug. Lucky for Microsoft, they had never stopped working on the old code base, so they had something to ship, making it merely a financial disaster, not a strategic one. This is a really hard thing to find information on, but if you look up Microsoft Project Pyramid, you'll probably get in the general direction. It's something which most people have kind of forgotten existed, and even at the time wasn't really getting that much in the way of coverage, so it's really hard to find any records about this still existing. We're programmers. Programmers are in their hearts architects, and the first thing they want to do when they get to a site is bulldoze the place flat and build something grand. We're not excited about incremental renovation. If you're even remotely competent, and this, <laughs> this does create problems, but if you have at least some basic level of programming knowledge and you understand how to break down a problem, it can be very easy to fall into a trap that you think you can do it better. You think you can make a better sorting algorithm. You think you can make a better game engine. You think you can make all manner of better things. And maybe you can, right? I'm not going to tell you not to do it. At the same time, keep in mind that a project that's been around for a very long time has had a lot of time to be polished, especially if a lot of people have had their eyes on it, if it's been used by a lot of people. And chances are, you actually aren't going to do it better. In fact, you might not even realize why you didn't do it better. However, and I know I've fallen for this as well, it's very easy to get caught up in your ego and think that because you're the one that's doing it and you understand how you think and you don't understand how other people think that you're going to do it better than them. There's a subtle reason that programmers always want to throw away the code and start over. The reason is they think the old code is a mess. And here is the interesting observation. They are probably wrong. The reason that they think the old code is a mess is because of a cardinal fundamental law of programming. It's harder to read code than to write it. Especially so if it's somebody else's code. If it's code you've never seen before, you don't even have any idea about their coding style, it's gonna be weird unless it very much aligns with your own style. But even more so, there is somebody very close to you that you don't recognize the style of. 
you from years ago, have you ever gone back and looked at like a five or 10 year old project you have and you look at it and it's like, why, who, what are you doing? What, why, why did I write it like this? What, how, how did I ever think this was a good idea? If this hasn't happened, either you're really, really good at writing code and have always been good at it, or you probably haven't improved. This is why code reuse is hard. This is why everybody on your team has a different function they like to use for splitting strings into arrays of strings. They write their own function because it's easier and more fun than figuring out how the old function works. This is exactly it. A lot of people really like the challenge of building something from scratch, starting with a greenfield project, but having to come in and deal with what somebody else did before you, unless you really like that project or you're getting paid for it, it can be very difficult to sort of motivate yourself to sit down and do the boring part, which is understand what somebody before you did before you can get to the fun part of hacking on it and seeing what else you can do. The idea that new code is better than old is patently absurd. Now this doesn't mean that new code can't be better and new code can't learn from the old code and not reintroduce those old problems and do things better. But old code does come with a lot of benefits. Old code has been used, it has been tested, lots of bugs have been found and they have been fixed. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't acquire bugs, but just sitting around on your hard drive. Now, I will disagree with these two points. There may be something wrong with it, and there may be justification for rewriting into something new, but in a lot of cases, you might be better off just ironing out those problems, and it technically doesn't acquire new bugs by just sitting around. However, the dependencies of the code may change, and those dependencies may introduce subtle changes and subtle bugs that technically your code isn't the reason for it. It's because everything else around the code has been changing. However, in a general sense though, older code is more likely to be more well tested and in a better state than something you write in a fresh project or something that is just done as a rewrite, again, without really careful planning to make sure you don't introduce those old problems once again. Going back to some old code looking like a mess, you look at the function and say, look, it's two pages long. None of this stuff belongs in here. I don't know what half of these API calls are for. Jumping ahead, yes, I know it's a simple function to display a window, but it has grown little hairs and stuff on it that nobody knows why. Well. I'll tell you why those are there. Those are bug fixes. And any little project is gonna have these things here. Even really big projects, right? I did a video the other day, I don't know if it's uploaded yet, but there is a very minor change made to the kernel that fixes a problem that's been there for about 32-ish years. It's a very simple check where on ARM64 platforms, the number of program headers you can have on an ARM64 system with 64k pages versus 4k pages is a different number, causing applications to break in inconsistent ways. This was a fix introduced 30 years ago, and there was probably a reason for that fix. And right now the solution is just remove that check. Now, is this the correct approach to be doing? Is nothing bad going to happen by doing so? But at the same time, you shouldn't naively remove things like this. They were added there for a reason, and you need to work out if that reason is still valid, or if that reason ever existed in the first place. When you throw away code and start from scratch, you are throwing away all that knowledge, all those collected bug fixes, years of programming work. You are throwing away your market leadership, you are giving a gift of two or three years to your competitors, and believe me, that is a long time in software years. This person approaching it, again, we're talking about Netscape, this is back before the Firefox days, so we're approaching this very much from a corporate perspective. But there is still value in this in the open source side as well, because let's say you have a driver. Let's say you're writing a driver in one language and you want to rewrite it into another one. You're going to have multiple years where those drivers basically don't move unless somebody's also maintaining the original one. And if somebody's maintaining the original one, 
it raises the question of what are you actually doing with this rewrite? And you're sort of effectively creating these two branching paths as there's always going to be reasons to keep that old one alive. You're putting yourself in an extremely dangerous position where you'll be shipping an old version of the code for years, completely unable to make any strategic changes or react to new features that the market demands because you don't have shippable code. You might as well just close business for that duration. You're wasting an outlandish amount of money writing code that already exists. At the time, the consensus seemed to be that the old Netscape code was really bad. However, it existed and it did work. Again, the new code might be better, and we can look at cases like with the Perl rewrite, or the MediaWiki rewrite, or PHP, or Netscape in the years to come, turning into Firefox, which early on was a really massive success. So even though at the time there might have been some criticism about this move, in the long run, it did turn out to be a good thing. It's just the time frame was quite a bit longer than a lot of people were hoping for. Now, there's this interesting thing that happens where people have this, like, weird ego that thinks what they're going to do is better than what other people have written, but at the same time, they acknowledge the fact that their own code might also be a mess, and their own code is also a problem. But... It's a problem, however, other people's code is probably worse, right? It, it's a weird problem with the human mind. First, there are architectural problems. The code is not factored correctly. The networking code is popping up its own dialog boxes from the middle of nowhere. This should have been handled in the UI code. These problems can be solved one at a time by carefully moving code, refactoring, and changing interfaces. They can be done by one programmer working carefully and checking in his changes all at once so that nobody else is disrupted. A second reason programmers think the code is a mess is that it is inefficient. The rendering code in Netscape was rumored to be slow, but this only affects a small part of the project which you can optimize or even rewrite. You don't have to rewrite the whole thing. Another thing is people are really bad at guessing what is actually causing performance issues and will say, oh, I should I should optimize this section when if you were to actually do a proper analysis of the code base, you'd realize that part is only a very small part of the equation and there is this giant thing over here that you probably should fix, but that's a lot harder to deal with. Third is your code might just be kind of ugly. One project I worked on actually had a data type called fstring. Another project I started using the convention of starting member variables with an underscore, but later switched to the more standard m underscore. So half the function started with underscore and half with m underscore, which looked ugly. Frankly, either of these looked ugly and uh, neither is a good approach and you should just come up with a better system. But at the same time, this is a pretty easy problem to solve by just using any sort of tool to refactor, whether that be Emacs or anything else, just make sure you don't introduce any accidental problems by changing characters you didn't mean to change. It's important to remember that when you start from scratch, there is absolutely no reason to believe you are going to do a better job than you did the first time. First of all, you probably don't even have the same programming team that worked on version one, so you don't actually have more experience. What you have is that code base that exists there, and hopefully you understand it well enough to not make the same mistakes again, but there is a non-zero chance, in fact, in many cases, a pretty high chance that you will introduce those same problems and very likely new ones. If you're writing code experimentally, you may want to rev up the function you wrote last week when you think of a better algorithm. That's fine. You may want to refactor a class to make it easy to use. That's fine too. But throwing away the whole program is dangerous folly. And if Nets... <laughs> I, I do love the Netscape example. If Netscape had actually had some adult supervision with software industry experience, they might not have shot themselves in the foot so badly. <laughs> oh, oh, well, um... I guess you'd find out in a few years after this that maybe in the long run it was probably a good idea to go the direction they went. Now, all of this does raise some good points about the danger of doing a rewrite. At the same time, if you're not just doing a rewrite for the sake of doing a rewrite and there are actual real problems and you are taking it slowly, you are taking it carefully, you can do one. There is still the issue of not having a release for a long time and that's a problem that can't really be overcome without 
just not doing a rewrite entirely. It kind of depends on how big the project is and what sort of requirements you have regarding releases. If you're doing something in the open source world, you might be able to get away with doing a rewrite because there are still people that are working on the old project and it's not like it's just suddenly stopped. But it is what it is, basically. It is what it is. People are always going to rewrite code bases, whether it's into new languages or new toolkits or just into the same thing, but they think they can do it better. And that's just the nature of people who are engineering minded, people who have sort of a hacky mind and want to learn how things work and how they can do things better and think they can do it better because they think they can do it better. Let me know about your experience. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like there was a code base there, it did what you wanted, but you thought you could do it better, whether it's your own code base or somebody else's? I'd love to know. Uh, go subscribe to the channel, and if you really like the video, go and uh, if you want to become one of uh, these people, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'll rewrite this ending.